I know it's been a couple of weeks. It is wonderful to be back. And uh, we were here. We weren't here last Sunday. We were here the Sunday before that. It seemed longer than that. Time plays funny tricks. Anyway, I'd like to start off with uh, knowing that we went through Ephesians 4. We finished up on Ephesians 4, and we'll be going into Ephesians 5 this morning. So if you have your Bibles with you, whether it be digital or book, or God bless you, your memory, flip through the pages or whatever you want to, to Ephesians 5. We're going to be reading chap uh, uh, verses 1 through 21. <clears throat> of course, we're not going to be going through all of this this morning. Uh, I had to break this up in a few, a few messages. So this one, they're kind of odd timing. So this one's probably shorter than the other ones. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But um, either way, let's begin. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 1. Paul writes, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you. And he gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Okay? Here we go. Verse 3. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. See, that's where our identity comes from. Saints. We are saints. Verse 4. And there must be no filthiness or silly talk, or coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather must be but rather must be no filthiness and silly talk, or coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks for this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covenous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Well, someone might come up and say, you know, the other day I was reading a book or through the years I've read a book and they, they kind of said, you know, that's not all true. That's kind of Paul's being kind of, you know, a little out there. Well, it's amazing that Paul would maybe think of that because when you read verse 6, it kind of fits right into this. Look at verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For cause of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light consists, consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Verse 11. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord is, verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for this is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. 
and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Now, that's a lot to take in all at once, and we're not going to take it in all at once. We're going to look at what we what I would think is the do's and do nots. Okay, the do's and don'ts. So this morning we're just going to look at the do's. I'm not going to get into it real heavy. Just going to pick out the do's that Paul or the do nots that Paul writes here. Things that we should avoid. Things that we shouldn't be um, involved with, so to speak. These are things that. Um, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these are things that you should feel convicted of by the Spirit. And you would hope that you wouldn't grieve the Spirit by ignoring the conviction. Okay? You want to know that conviction, know who, know who it's from, from the Spirit, and act upon that in a Christian way, in a godly way, not in a worldly way. So, two lists, do not... That's what Paul basically says is do not. It's a list. We'll look at this one first. So, do not engage in sexual immorality or impurity. Now, in today's society, first thing people would like to say is, well, that's just an alternative lifestyle. No, okay, no. It's immorality. It's impurity. I know... When we were, Julie and I were uh, taking care of the teens, even growing up, the word, you know, the word hot was, was used a lot. Oh, well, she looks hot. He looks hot. You know? So, you know, teenagers said, well, what, what if they look really hot? You know? What? No. Can I tell you something? Uh, from Scripture, hell is also hot. Okay? So, be realistic. You know, put your hands where they belong. You know, put them back on yourself. You know, don't put them where they don't belong. <laughs> always, this is, this is always a good conversation. It usually doesn't go well. Because somebody will come up and say, well, well in God's eyes, we're married. Hmm. Okay. All right. In, in my opinion, unfortunately, that's a cop-out for commitment to, to, to just have a, to have a ceremony. Okay, before God and people. All right. You know, from my recollection of Revelation, you know, God's eyes, you know, Jesus' eyes are pretty red and flaming, you know, not looking very pleasant. You know, so uh, as much as you want to believe that you're married in God's eyes, I, I, I struggle with that a little bit, but that's me. So, and then what if you're going to get married? You know, what if we've known each other for a long time? Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself, all right, and go get married. Get married, you know, and and and, and don't do nothing until you're married. Okay, I, listen. I, I we had a couple that that when they came to Christ, when they came to Jesus, it was a, it was an amazing transformation, and, and and they actually had their eyes open to the point where they knew they were living in sin because they weren't married, and. They decided to abstain themselves. They just picked a number, 40 days. 40 days. And then after the 40 days, they got married. Can I tell you something? Who does that? Who, who does that? People that are convicted by God do that. Okay? And then you, you, you get the wise, the, the, the people that are, the, the wise cracks, the, the, the people that just want to really throw this one out. Well, you know, Paul, 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 that was in Greek, wasn't it? Well, what does it say in Greek? And here's what you do look at them and you just basically say, it just says you're nasty, okay? You're just nasty, all right? Who cares what it says in the Greek? It says it's bad, okay? Do not do it. Do not have any sexual impurity, uh, 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 immorality, or impurity, period, okay? Number two. Do not engage in uh, covetous, covetousness or greed. Now, in today's society, <laughs> covetousness and greed, that's just the nice, you know, we, we, let's, let's, because we like to mix words. We like to call things differently. I, I, I'd like to call this advertising and marketing, okay? 
It's just advertising and marketing, all right? So what, what actually, what are we talking about though? What, what are we really talking about? Mind you, this is going to the heart, okay? There is a healthy and an unhealthy uh, way to look at this, okay? When we're talking about being covet covetousness and, and greed, okay, or jealousy, it's like somebody getting a new car and saying, man, I would really love to have that car. And there's sort of a, this, this unhealthy, lustful desire because you're envious and you're, you, you don't, you know, this person might not deserve it, but you deserve it. And, and you don't have it because they have it. You want it because you're trying to outdo the Joneses, so to speak. That's a sin. Okay. But if you're just talking to someone and, and there's no malice in your heart, there's no deep unhealthiness or there's no unhealthiness in your heart. And you just say something on the lines of, man, that's a beautiful vehicle. You know, that would be, I wish I could have something like that. And it was just something that you said, believe me, I, I don't think it's, you know, it's, it's like God's wrath is going to come down upon you all of a sudden. We're talking about something that is deep rooted when it comes to this particular, all right, or something on the lines of um, when a man or a woman, you know, definitely looks upon another man or a woman and they say, wow, they're really good looking. I wish I could look that way. And then vanity comes in. You're speaking out of vanity then. You're speaking with the fact of you, you don't feel comfortable or you're not happy with the way God made you. So and listen, I'm not talking about being healthy. I'm not talking that you want to go and become healthy. I'm talking that your vanity, your outward appearance is because you saw someone else in the advertising and marketing scheme knows this very well, you know, that we want to look like them because they look good or whatever it is. So we have to be very guarded when we think those things or say those things. Okay. So number three, do not participate in filthiness, foolish talk, or crude humor, right? Uh, all right. I, I mean, this is, uh, I admit, uh, I will sink to the deepest depths right now and, 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 and let you know I failed on this one. Because when you're at work, guys get together, guys, guys, you get together and you get caught up in the moment and then it, it turns bad, okay? And I have to dare say that it's just not guys. Women have a tendency to do this too. I've heard, I've seen, okay? So we have to be careful with how we're talking and what we're being involved with our discussion with other people. Um, inappropriate, crude, sexual based, vulgar, joking and gesturing. It, it, we don't do that, you know? Um, I know guys will do things because it's all guys, but yet if, if you insert a lady into the situation, like if, if, a, if one of the lady workers walks in, it's like, shh, don't, don't, you know, let's be, be quiet, you know? No, just be, we, we try not, we have to, we have to be better at not doing it or being involved. Do not associate with sinful behavior. This is number four. It doesn't say don't associate with sinful people. Okay, let's make it very clear. Do not associate with sinful behavior. Okay, if you didn't associate with sinful people, you'd have to go find a new planet somewhere, and that's just a little inconvenient. Okay, you, you, you can't do that, all right? Um, so don't participate in sinful behavior, meaning if some people are doing something that's wrong, you, you just can't do it with them. You, you can't be there. You can't be involved with what they're doing. You know, and this is that part where um, the Holy Spirit, I would pray, would come in and convict you. And you would have the discernment enough to know that it is the Holy Spirit that's convicting you. And, and you would have the wisdom from God knowing that, you know, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be involved. I shouldn't even be around right now. I should probably just leave, you know. This is not right. This is wrong. 
know, so, sometimes it's a group of friends that we, we were with. And those group of friends, as much as we love them and we communicate, and it doesn't say not to, you do. You love them, you be with them. But when they go into those situations, that's when you just say, that's not for me. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. You know, let me know when you guys are done or whatever it is. You know, you just can't go with them. And here, here's a perfect example. Men and women both, I do not like, uh, sometimes we, we focus on one, uh, one gender, so to speak, but it doesn't happen that way. It's both men and women. They do this both. So men have single friends, women have single friends, and you know, you just want to go out with your single friends. Well, guess what? Being married, you can't do what single people do. Okay. You can't put yourself in situations that single people do. Okay. And I've seen it in my life where single ladies and single men will go out with their, I mean, married ladies, married men will go out with their single friends and it doesn't turn out very good. So you just don't do that. You don't put yourself in that predicament. You know, I'm not saying you can't go out. I'm saying you have to have self-control. You have to know when to back away and leave. Okay. Number five, do not take part, uh, do not take part in any works of darkness, but expose them. This is extremely important. This is one of the things where the church, the body of Christ in and of itself, uh, I, I think fails greatly. I mean, one of many things because we, we, we put the human thing involved and we lie to ourselves and say, well, I'm only human. That's not an excuse. A wise man told me one time, he says, you realize that being naive in the court of law doesn't fly. There is no such thing as being naive in the court of law. And that's very true. That same concept goes with us being judged by God himself. Just because you think that you're behind a closed door, no one sees, or, you know, you go over to the, uh, the, the wall and shut the light off, you know, and you're doing things in hidden, you know, you're doing things in the dark. Don't think that God doesn't see, you know, it's not like he's up there going, wow, they shut the light off on me. What do I do now? I don't know what they're doing wrong. Okay. The fact of the matter is we were in darkness and we are now out of darkness and we are children of light as being children of light our sin our whatever's going on with us we need to expose it i'm not saying to hang out your dirty laundry for everyone i will never grow on, i will never get on that um, that train at all but you do need to come to the point where you expose or talk to someone in confidence that says, I have an issue, I have a problem, I need help. And that's what the body of Christ should be doing. And the body of Christ should not be grabbing that person and all of a sudden exposing them as some heinous heretic. They're not. They're asking for help. You help them. Okay? And that is a big thing. And D.L. Moody, he made this saying. He said, character is what you are in the dark. Okay. When you don't think anyone's looking, you turn the lights off and you assume that God can't see you. You know, it's sort of this sacred time. It's this hidden time. You don't want people to know you you visited this website or you, you've done this or you engaged in this relationship. What, whatever, whatever it is, it, it's, it's hidden, it's confet, it's, it's hidden, it's in the dark. We can't do that no more. Not in today's world. We need to expose those things. And we need to expose them in a healthy way. We don't expose them to tear and demolish someone. There is a point in a place, in a way, to do something like that within the body of Christ, all right? But we ourselves need to be mature enough 
to expose them ourselves about ourselves. So we need to step up to the plate and change. Actually, pray the Holy Spirit changes us. Number six. He says, do not get drunk. Now, it's not a sin to have a drink. I'm not going to stand up here and, and go over drunkenness and, and drinking. You know, I will say if you're over 21 and you want to have a drink, I'm not going to condemn you. There's no way. It says, do not get drunk. However, it also states in another book, in another scripture, which my mind is not making me remember right now, to not be a stumbling block for your brothers and sisters. You do not become a stumbling block for them. Okay? Listen, I grew up in an Italian family that drank wine. At dinner, on occasion, not for drunkenness, but because, for whatever reason, Italians and wine go hand in hand. I don't understand that. Okay? I never looked into the, all the cultural aspects of it. Okay? But it's not just Italian. I shouldn't even just point out Italian. There's many European families that do that. Many European cultures that do that. All right? The fact is, it's don't get drunk with wine. <laughs> Could you imagine? And, and, and some, it's, it's amazing. There, there's just some religious people out there that say, well, Jesus didn't turn the wine or water into wine. He turned it into grape juice. Really? Really? He turned it into grape juice. So Paul would have put down there, do not get drunk with grape juice. Okay, let me think about this. Do not get drunk with grape juice. I'm pretty sure I would drown myself in the grape juice before I got drunk, okay, with grape juice. That doesn't make any sense, all right? So the fact of the matter is, we need to be mature enough as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, to know that if you're going to have a drink, you drink without making someone stumble, and you don't get drunk, okay? I'm going to go a little further with this because it needs to be said. I mentioned wine. Can I tell you? I'm talking about substance abuse, period. Okay? I think uh, in the book of Proverbs it talks about beer. Okay? Listen. Anything that can hinder your self-control is what you don't go overboard on. Okay? That includes medication. That includes includes beer, that includes any hard up. I, I mean, come on. Um, well, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get drunk on wine. I'm, you know, I'll just go to hard liquor. Really? Are you, are you kidding me? See, people that act like that and think that way, I, it's my problem. I have a hard time and I, I'm not going to deal with it. I, I'd rather not because they don't want to come to the realization that they have a problem and they don't want any help. So at that point, uh, I'm not going to waste my time and throw my pearls to swine. I'm not going to do it. Okay. When they want help, absolutely 100% you help. But if there's no help to be found, if they don't want help, they want to stay in their misery. You want to talk to them, that's fine. You don't see any type of, uh, if, there's, if there's no change, if there's no desire to change, uh, that's a hard place to be. It does say to be drunk by who? The Holy Spirit. Because that's what this is about. This is about being self-controlled and being alert. Okay, those are the don'ts. That was number six. Those are the do nots. Now we have the do list. And I'm not going to go into this. is going to be continued next week, of course. But we have the do list. First thing, right off the bat, imitate God. Really? Really? That's, that's a pretty high standard, wouldn't you say? That's a big request. This isn't the sort of a, 
Uh, this is sort of a, a, a definition of life, you know. Imitate God. How would God treat them? What would God say? What would God do? What would God give? How would God respond? How would God react? How would God think? How would God feel? All of life now becomes God-centered instead of the narcissistic society that we live in today, which is self-centered. It becomes God-centered. We live life then, there's a Latin term that's called quorum dio, and this is a theological thing that they say, in the face of God, okay? Who are you, and how can I imitate you? God, I need to know who you truly are and how I can Im imitate you. And that's really a form of worship. Responding as God will respond, reflecting who he is. Another do, walk in love. Now this is, this is habitual. It's an ongoing lifestyle. You love people. This includes generosity and affection and service and investment in people. And this is something that's really, really hard to, for people to like do anymore. Because the world has taken the term love and made it tolerant. Let's make it, let's make it intolerant. I'm sorry. Or, no, it makes it tolerant. You know, well, if you can't accept my lifestyle, you, you don't love me. If you can't accept this about me, you don't love me. Well, that's not true. I do love you. I want to help you. I want to support you. But I can't support you in your sin. And that's where the world gets all kind of bad stuff. Walk as children of light. This is being honest with your own sin putting it out there in the light. For One John says this, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. So walking in the light means talking to God and other Christians about our sins and our struggles. Here's what goes on. Here's where I am failing. And this is what I don't want to hide in all the darkness. I want it to come out into the light. I want everything that I do to be transparent. I want to put it in the light. I need help. I need accountability. There's a word that is not likable. <laughs> accountability. I need support. See, this is what's going on. I'm just going to put it out there and in the light. You know, it's going to be ugly. There's no doubt. I know it's hard to look at, but I'm here because I truly need Jesus, and I truly need Jesus' people. So we need to walk in the light, and we need to be prepared and ready to walk with people in the light. It's not just us. We're not alone. We need to support each other and walk hand in hand in life. One of the main... They will know we are Christians by what? Love. Love. How do we love one another? We support one another. We're honest with one another. We're not meanfully, maliciously confronting one another. We're humbly, compassionately informing one another of the failures that we have in each other. And we support one another. You see, too often times I see people keep everything in the darkness until their life falls apart and then run into church and you try to microwave the relationships for help. And, and, and if, if you know someone like that, if you're listening to this, we want you, everyone to know that we love you. There's no doubt we love you. We praise God. But for everyone else who's walking in the light, it's a, that is that walking in the light before it's a crisis. Allow others to know you. 
and be in community with one another. That's what's so great about community. There's support there. Who are you? Who am I? Where are you? Where am I? How can I help you? How can you help me so that together we can imitate him? Him being Christ. Him being Jesus. That's the idea of this. One individual is not Jesus Christ. He alone is himself. Collectively, we are the body of Jesus. Collectively, a community makes the body of Christ. Let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, please forgive us. Please forgive us for doing the do nots and not doing the do's. Help us in our faith to rely on you to give us the strength necessary to look at the do nots and say, I'm not there no more. That's not my identity. That's not who I am. I want to do the do's. I want to be in your body. I want to help those that are where I used to be. And you've blessed me and helped me get out of that, whatever it might be. Let me help them. Father, give us the strength and the perseverance to run this race that you've set before us and to help our brothers and sisters in Christ as we learn true community, as we learn to support one another. And, and we allow all the junk and the schisms of religion and denomination and everything just, just to fall away. And that we come together as believers in Jesus Christ, loving one another, so the world we may know that we are your disciples, that we are your followers. And it's only because of our love for one another and for you above all. In Jesus' name.